Today's Bible story is based on the events that took place in Daniel chapter 6. Also better known as Daniel in the lion's den. Just imagine being thrown into a lion's den and wondering what your fate would be. Yet Daniel knew his God would be able to deliver him and help him out of that situation. Today's story is fast-paced and exciting with all of the twists and turns that take place. Our team is coming to share this wonderful story today. See you later. Hello everyone, and welcome. I'm Max Headley, for GNN, Good News Network reporting today. Our story takes us back into the Babylonian captivity, of the Jewish nation. King Nebuchadnezzar II dies, and his son Belshazzar takes over the kingdom. One of the first things he did as king was to throw a party where they brought out the sacred things, taken from the temple in Jerusalem. In short, he sees a handwriting on the wall, and calls for Daniel to interpret. Daniel tells the king that his rule is finished, because of what he did. Later that night he is killed, and King Darius, takes control of the kingdom. I'm Max Headley, reporting for GNN, Good News Network. Hello everyone, I'm JB, the Bible Junkie, here to do the memory verse with you today. Our verse is found in Daniel chapter 6, and verses, 21, through 22. It says, Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty, Daniel chapter 6, and verses, 21, through 22. NIV Now I would like for you all to say the verse with me. Are you ready? Good. 1, 2, and 3. Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. 
nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty, Daniel chapter 6, and verses, 21, through 22. NIV. That was great today, you guys and gals are awesome. This is another one of many of my favorite stories of the Bible. I promise that if you pay attention, you will learn a lot today. So, get ready for the ride of your life. I'm JV, the Bible Junkie. So, keep it tuned in here, for more to come. See you all next week. Greetings everyone. I'm Mike Sullivan with Straight Talk. Today we are looking an unusual Bible story about a man who is a Jew and a pack of hungry lions. One could say that Daniel didn't have any hope or chance of surviving this event. Yet Daniel did survive, and he came out of that situation untouched. For the story about this today. The rest of the team will be here to share more insights of what took place. For now, I want to share a little about Babylon. Right before the end of King Nebuchadnezzar II. He had just come back from being exiled to the fields because of Daniel's interpretation. When the king acknowledged that God was over all, God restored him back to his throne. After his death, Belshazzar his son took over only to rule for two years before King Darius attacked and took Babylon as his own. This has been Straight Talk with Mike Sullivan. See you next week. Hello everyone, I'm PF, and we have a really great story for you today. It's about Daniel in the lion's den. But before we get to this, I want to set up the history of what was going on around this time. We told you last week that King Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem and brought hundreds of Jews into exile. Israel was repeatedly warned to turn their ways back to the Lord, that is the one true God, but Israel kept on sinning against God, so God caused Babylon to come in and capture them and take them into captivity. The, the Jews were in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. After King Nebuchadnezzar died, his son Bel Belshazzar took over the kingdom only to serve for two years before he was killed by Darius the Great, who was known as the Persian king. So Babylon is now under his reign from 548 to 486 BC, approximately 30 years. He assumed the throne in Babylon at the age of 28. After coming to power in Babylon, King Darius assigned 120 satraps. These were men who were provincial governors in the ancient Persian Empire. The kings back in the day, as well as today, had what was a signet ring. With this ring, they used it to sign documents, papers, and, and it was the signature ring that the seal that the king wore on his hand. It was a way of him saying that this decree or law or document was approved by the king himself. Now, of all the 120 satraps that were appointed by the King Darius, Daniel happened to be one of them. Every one of them were jealous of Daniel because he was honest in all of his dealings with the people and everything he did while the other satraps were dishonest and always tried to line their pockets with extra from the treasury. What made them even more envious is that King Darius appointed Daniel as the chief president over all the 120 satraps. See y'all later. Hello and welcome from Babylon. This is Betty Tellall reporting from Gene and Good News Network. I want you to notice behind me is the area where it was believed that these were one of the several lion dens that Babylon had. You can see in the distance the statue of what is a lion remaining on a pedestal. While down below is the ruins of what was once known as a lion's den. For this I want to send it over to Chase Montgomery who is at Babylon among these ruins. Thank you Betty Tell All. I'm here among the ruins in Babylon, to tell you that these lion dens were not just a made-up story. 
there is proof in the historical artifacts that we have uncovered from before the War of 2003. That indeed the narrative proves that there was a decree about prayer that would land one into the lion's den. Daniel's jealous rivals plot his downfall, tricking Darius into issuing a decree that no prayers should be addressed to any god or man but to Darius himself, on pain of death. Which King Darius signed with his signet ring, making this law enforceable. Thank you Chase Montgomery for that interesting insight into what you're finding out in Babylon. This has been Betty Tellall reporting from Babylon Today. For GNN Good News Network. Hello everyone, I am Professor Whoopi and I'm here to definitely whoopie up a big one for you today. Well, let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 6. It says, Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember your majesty, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. Then the king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought in to him, and he could not sleep. At first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called out to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouth of the lions, and they have not hurt me because I was found innocent in the sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before your majesty. And that's Daniel chapter 6, verses 11 through 22, in the NIV. The prophet Daniel was living under a king who did not respect God when he made prayer against the law. It did not stop Daniel from praying. The punishment was terrible. He was to be thrown into a cave of lions overnight. King Darius told Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually rescue you. And then the stone was put over the top and the king put his signet ring on it to make sure that Daniel's situation will not change. Then King Darius went back to his house. The word of God tells us that he did not eat or, or entertain or anything like that night and he couldn't even sleep. Meanwhile, the Lord saved Daniel and protected him from harm all night long. The next morning, the king runs to the lion's den, had the stone removed and calls out to Daniel. And Daniel replied, as we've already told you, My God sent thee his angel, and he shut the mouth of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. But the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den, then the accusers were thrown into the lion's den. And guess what? Whoa! The lions ate them all up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so King Darius issues a new decree for our Babylonians and surrounding provinces. He says, I issue a decree that every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed, his dominion will never end. He rescues and saves, he performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Whoa! Now that was a proclamation that was worth making. I think I'd say that myself. Oh, that's right. Okay, it is time for me to go, but the rest of the team will be here shortly to finish up everything today. But 
I need to say goodbye. A will say, Arrivederci. Hasta la vega. Hasta la vega. Hula hula. Whoa. Last but not least, of course, Aruba boo. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Don't ever forget that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and Professor Whoopi and the team, we love you and we want to see the best for you. Goodbye. Hello, everybody. Today, I want to demonstrate what it might look like to trust God. When Daniel was in the lion's den, he had to trust that God would deliver him. Daniel had no idea how God would do it, but he trusted God would. Here we have a regular sandwich bag filled with water. Now watch close as I push a pencil into the bag of water. See how the water still remains in the bag. But what happens if another pencil gets put into the bag? And another. Trusting God is relying on Him to protect us, no matter what comes at us. If these pencils represented the lions, Daniel could be in a lot of trouble. Yet he isn't being hurt by the pencils and God is sustaining and protecting him. Trusting in God will always lead to God protecting you in all situations. Thanks for watching today. Hello, I'm Neil Never Lie, reporting for GNN, Good News Network. Once again, I'm here in Babylon home of the Tower of Babel, and the old Babylonian Empire and now the country of Iran. Here is a symbol of the Babylonian Empire which marks the rule and signa of the kingdom and its territories that is the winged lion of Darius pictured behind me. King Darius was known for his strategic planning and administration abilities. He brought the kingdom of Babylon along with all of its territories together into one big united kingdom, with his 120 satraps governing over all the provinces of the land. He was able to expand his kingdom far and wide. Well, this has been Neil Neverly reporting for GNN, Good News Network. Hey everybody! It's me, Ollie! Yeah, you're right, Ollie J. Oliver. I just wanted to let you know that Daniel, along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, decided not to give in to the temptations of the Babylonian king. They made an effort to remain faithful to their lord. Faithfulness to the lord, in spite of temptation, is a very important quality of Christian leadership. Daniel is a story of a person being faithful to God. And more importantly, the life of Daniel recorded in the Old Testament shows us of God's faithfulness. God knew Daniel. He knew Daniel's needs and what Daniel was struggling with. And it's very clear that Daniel loved God and God loved Daniel. When Daniel would pray, he couldn't see Jerusalem from his window. So he was separated by 550 miles in Arabian desert. That's a lot of land. And yet this simple act of opening his window was showing his faith in God's word and confidence that the Lord would hear his prayer. So today, boys and girls, I dare you to be a Daniel. Do you have that much faith in God and know that he hears your prayers? Well, I think you should give it a good try. And that's about all. Back to you guys.
Adidas has been an OJO production. Thank you very much.